Welcome to segment two of the Bible says this, what say you? Psalms 33 verse four, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now, hey, hang in there with me today now because uh, we're, 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 we're walking in some deep water and I expect my audience to listen with an open mind. Someone said to me the other day, man, I'm not going to say anything that sounds like I'm supporting this, the, the Klan or white supremacists or anyone like, anyone like that. And listen, listen, look at me. Look at me. Tune in. Zero. Listen, give, give them a close up. Give them a close up. Zoom in. Do I look like a man who would support white supremacists? I am a black man proud to be an African-American, proud to be an American. My mom is African-American. My dad's African-American. I'm black born, black bred. And when I die, I'll be black man dead so you know that I do not support any form of white supremacy supremacy uh, I don't I do not support white supremacists I do not support Nazis I do not support the Klan as a matter of fact these are wicked organizations filled with backwards wicked folk who are on the losing side of history and let me tell you something don't you let the media whip you up in a hysteria where you are so afraid and you're looking over your shoulder because the Klan's getting ready to come after you at any time. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the Klan's uh, numbers are, <laughs> are estimated today to be around 4,000. I've heard someone give an estimation of 6,000. Now my question to you is this. In a nation of 365 million people, are you going to be afraid of a group that numbers now uh, around 4,000 who are constantly on the losing end? The Klan were marching in Charlottesville, Virginia uh, to protest the removal of a monument to Robert E. Lee uh, uh, at, because the, the decision had already been made to remove the thing, so the march was a waste of time. They had already renamed the park uh, from uh, Lee Park to uh, uh, Emancipation Park, if I'm correct here, but the park had been renamed, so you got the Klan marching. They're marching, it's a futile march, it's a worthless march, and it's a march that mirrors many of the marches that they've already had. I talked to someone who talked to a law enforcement officer who was there. He says they do that in Charlottesville all the time and nothing comes of it. About 25 people show up, they march for a couple of hours, and they go home. Nothing comes of it, uh, and nothing would have come of this one had they been allowed to march, say what they got to say. They have a right to be heard, or should I say, they have a right to speak, but not a right to be heard. You know, we wouldn't have heard them had the media not come down and cover it. That would have been no clash had Antifa not come in and clashed with these people. Now listen to me, listen to me. The ACLU, who is no friend of the right, no friend of any Christian preacher, the ACLU was there and they said they couldn't tell who threw the first punch. I do know this, I do know this, and I will say this depending on, and I'm depending on your intelligence to hear what I'm saying and not hear what I'm, and not make up something. You know, when you say stuff like that, you're saying that the Klan is okay. I, I, I count on you to be able to listen better than that. In Charlottesville, Virginia, the only group who had a permit that they have a copy of it to march was the white supremacists. <laughs> the, the white supremacists had uh, got a legal permit, march time from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, it gave the, 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 the location and all, it gave the, the location when you can march and all that kind of stuff, okay? Once people get a legal permit to march or to demonstrate, they're told where they can go, where they can't go, and how long they can, can do it. I know because I participate in demonstrations all the time. Now, I don't march for white supremacy. I march, I demonstrate for unborn lives, unborn babies. 
unborn little girls, unborn little boys, black boys, white boys, black girls, white girls, Asian, Hispanic. But by and large, nobody is aborting their children like uh, 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 we are. And, and saints, we got to fight it. We got to fight this. And preachers, you got to preach against it. And, and, and media, where are you? 18, 1,876 babies on average, uh, just black alone will be aborted today while we're doing this shoot today by the end of the day and over 4,000 thereabout uh, uh, across this country of all colors will be aborted and where's the coverage where's the outcry I guess I guess unborn babes uh, babies don't matter I hate that the young lady uh, lost her life in Charlottesville I really hate it for those officers who lost their lives but they were three people and that same day at least 1,876 black babies were lives were snuffed out, and 4,000 American unborn babies lives were snuffed out, and there's not a peep from the media. But the point, let's let's get back on point. Let's get back on point. So uh, there they were. There's this march, and the media covers the story. The Klan was there. Now our First Amendment rights, because I believe. I believe that this thing is about more than Robert E. Lee, <laughs> monuments, and we can discuss that at another time as to whether or not they should be uh, destroyed or removed. I personally believe that uh, anything that reflects our past uh, should be uh, maintained. Now, whether or not it should be, th these monuments should be where they are. That's a different discussion. But I don't believe that they should be vandalized or pulled down because I'm so proud of the monuments that are dedicated to the great, the late, great Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Every time I see a monument to him, it makes me feel good. What an awesome man he, uh, he was and what a mighty thing he, he, uh, uh, he did and he accomplished and he led us and he was good for African Americans. He was good for Americans. He's been good for America. But now if you go to D.C., just so, you know, I get in the weeds real quick. Go to D.C. and you look at his monument. If you, if you look at all of the quotes, you would never know that he was a preacher. You never know he was a gospel uh, minister, a Baptist minister. You would never know that he read the Bible because there's not one quote from the scriptures uh, uh, up there unless they put one up there yesterday. They are trying to secularize. Uh, Reverend Martin Luther King, uh, they're trying to remove him from Christianity. And that is what I believe is going on with all of this. For those who, who say we shouldn't let the Klan speak, the First Amendment protects all of, our, uh, all of us. The, the First Amendment was not put in place to protect speech that everybody likes. It was put in place to, res, uh, to protect repugnant speech. Because to someone, all of our speeches, to somebody, is repugnant. Someone is offended by what we have to say. Now, today, the spotlight's on the Klan. Tomorrow, it may be the LGBTQ and whatever other uh, letter comes behind that against the Christian minister because there are people who want to treat the Bible or at least portions of the Bible as though it is hate speech. So today it's the Klan. Hey preacher, tomorrow it may be you. I believe that we should uh, uh, abide by the First Amendment which says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech. To abridge means to shorten. Let them people say what they want to say. Just don't go down there and listen to them. They came to Raleigh one year, and oh my, I wanted to go down and chop it up and mix it up and stand on the side and scream to those uh, wicked white supremacists and the prevailing black thought then, which I'm glad I listened, it was just wisdom, was don't go down there. Why would you honor those people with your time and your attention? Let them march. Let them protest. But let them protest to fire hydrants. 
empty streets, uh, empty parking lots, uh, concrete walls. They will say all, they will spew their garbage. They will say what they have to say. Nobody will listen to them and they will accomplish nothing. I'm so glad that I didn't go down there. They did just that. They got minimal to zero media attention, a flash on the screen. Uh, there was no loss of life. Nothing happened. Nothing came of it. They didn't gain any power. Their numbers are still dropping until, until you get the, the media now going there and, and picking sides. And so, uh, oh my, so the, the, the battle breaks out. So I'm, here I am. Here I am depending on the intelligence of my listeners to know that I am by no means whatsoever. Woo, I get exhausted trying to say this. Defending the Klan. But I do defend free speech because there are people who don't like what I have to say. And today it's them. Tomorrow, preacher, it's you, it's me. Oh, Reverend, that can't happen. It has already happened. In, in, in our neighbors to the north, in Canada, it's against the law to preach against homosexuality. In the UK, you can't preach against homosexuality. In some of these countries, they send government officials into the churches, pretending to be mem members, listening to the preacher, hoping he will say something against perversion of all things, a lifestyle that is so repugnant to human existence that if everyone practiced it, it would mean the extension of the human race in less than 75 to 100 years. It's a lifestyle that God says is wrong, that the Bible calls abominable, and it destroys destroys all who practice it. It is wrong. And do you know what? There are people who would take what I just said and call that hate speech. And if they had their way, they would, they would uh, 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 come against my right, my constitutional right to say what I just said. I have a constitutional right to say it. They don't have to come and hear it. Right? Right? So today they're coming after the Klan. Tomorrow they may be coming after you. They may be coming after me. We saw some people the other day decide that they would have an impromptu gathering and they were going to march. And they said, we're not going to let the Klan march in our streets. The Klan is the worst as far as I'm concerned. But let me tell you something. If people get a legal permit, just don't go down there. The whole point of a protest, the whole point of a protest is to garner attention. That's it. To get you to listen, to get people to talk about it. Here we are, we're talking about, we're talking about this stuff where, and it's been going on all the time. So the media now are making you think that since Trump became president, there's been this explosion of white supremacy, this explosion of racism. Well, I heard for eight years from my friends, both liberal and conservative, that since President Obama became president, there had been a growth of uh, white supremacy. Okay, so was the growth since uh, Donald Trump became president, or was there a growth in it uh, 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 for eight years of, of President Obama? I, I've even heard people say, you know, when Obama was president, I was listening to an athlete the other day, it seemed like we were going in the right direction. Now we're going in the wrong direction. But at the same time, we would say, when, when President Obama was president, that was this explosion in uh, white supremacy. Racism will always be and has always been a part of this nation and a part of this world. America did not create slavery. America predates slavery. Read the Bible. You see where the children of Israel were in, <laughs> enslaved for 400 years. They weren't enslaved to white people. They were enslaved to the Egyptians. Everybody was brown, and yet one man enslaved another. It is a result of fallen man. But I tell you what America did do. America ended slavery. And I've got some things to say to you. Now, I want you to join me for my next segment because I want to investigate uh, the president's uh, comments that there were good people on both sides. Was he saying there were good Nazis and good white supremacists? Or was he acknowledging that there may have been people there who were neither in neither hate group? I'll talk to you for my next segment. The Bible says this. What say you?